Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the Speedy Boys are back at it again. Yes, sir. It's another episode of the Pile Driver Podcast. I am your host, the best in the world. That is my co-host, the Big Dog. How you doing, brother? That was so good. I, We're doing yeah, good, man. I, that was good. I like that. I feel it. I feel good. Um, um, despite, I don't want to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. We're not going to get into it. We will say it because we say it every week. In the words of the great Seth Rollins, I hate football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Browns lost. Uh, it looked solid for a while, and then they kind of just gave it up at the end. I, that that fumble um, on the double reverse just took just deflated the Browns, just everything. So that was, you know, neither here nor there. Browns seven and four. On to next, on to next week, and the Los Angeles Rams. Yep. So maybe Joe Flacco. Yeah, Joe and maybe Flacco. and maybe Joe Flacco. Maybe Joe Flacco. Coming up, normally, I know normally we don't do a lot of WWE talking. Nope. There's a big elephant in the room. If we all know, you've all seen him, and we're gonna talk about him. We got an old friend coming on to to join us and talk a little smack because he he messaged the pod and he said, "Hey." This is where I need to come air my grievances. I got some things that I need to get off my chest. Yes, yeah. So in, in a little bit, we will be wel- welcoming Joey Schneider to the to the pod. Great and Joey Schneider. We're going to talk about WWE Survivor Series. Um, so not out of that. Let me just go ahead and get him on in here, and we'll get started, man. Yeah, man. Survivor Series, um, what a night. Overall, like as as a show in general, Minus the stuff that we're all going to talk about, um, it was a good show from top to from start to finish. All right, before we talk about what we're going to talk about, let's talk about the return of the evening, our fucking truth, baby, <laughs> buddy, 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 buddy. Our truth returning out with the chips and the ruffles was probably my favorite thing of the night. If we're being a hundred percent honest, it was, it was pretty funny. I got excited. And I love how Triple H started the media scrum with it's all about the big return. The same thing. Exactly. Oh, sure. Joey, are you here? Can you hear us, my guy? I can hear you. Can you guys hear me? The big Joey. guy is here. What's up, brother? How uh, are you? I've had better weekends, my friend. I have had better weekends. <laughs> but you guys have brightened up my, my entire weekend. This makes up for all the awful losses, seeing your guys' gorgeous faces. Yeah, oh, it was bad. We just face. yeah. It's been a long time. We're not we're not even gonna get into Saturdays. I mean, I I can't say nothing about that. It was a solid game. We just couldn't pull it through when it counted. Today, yep. I got nothing to say about the Browns. We Browns did up pretty solid today. So yeah, I expect. I mean, Joe Flacco next week probably. So whatever. Hold on. I think we lost Joey's audio. Can you hear Joey Dean? I can't hear Joey. I cannot. Joey. We lost him. No. Anyways, can Joey hear us? I don't okay. Know. Joey can hear us. So we're still gonna keep going then. Joey's gonna figure okay. out what he's gonna come back. But yeah, last night WWE Survivor Series kicked off with a bang, man. I'm talking WWE the women's war games match was phenomenal. Joey, can you hear me yet? Can we hear you? I can hear you. Can you hey, hear me? There I can hear him. There All, we right. Go. All right. All right. So yeah, women's war games match was phenomenal, guys. Like, what do you, go ahead? What do you tell me what you think about this match? Because I thought it was amazing. It had definitely one of my favorite spots of the night with the EO Sky like trash should, can jump. Do you feel like it should have been a five person? Yes, a hundred percent. Did it but feel they, weird because it wasn't? It was because against damage control, you had Dakota Kai. That's the only other member, and she's hurt. So you can't just, you know, but I mean, they kind of just plugged Drew McIntyre in with Judgment Day. So that's what I'm saying. Like, you could have thrown somebody in there. No, otherwise, it was a great match. Uh, EO's crazy. EO's always been nuts, though, man. I miss Kyrie Zane. Um, I, overall, it was great, dude. I loved it. I was impressed. It started off really slow and kind of sloppy, but it, it picked up. And if the finish and everything, I was. At, at first, I was very critical of it. I'm like, man, this kind of sucks. But then as it progressed a little bit and it actually started, everybody was in the ring and the action started going, it was good. 
Um, I didn't like Charlotte Flair's moonsault. I hate that they kept they kept like showing it like it was so pretty, and it was not. She, it was she, she over but exactly. She overextended. She didn't lay out at all because like she just assumed like it was like she was doing it off the top turnbuckle. Like she didn't adjust for the height at all. It looked like she got the tip of her boot right in the forehead. You, can you guys hear me? Yep. Can hear you, baby. All right. Uh, I thought both. Actually, I, I thought both the matches were good. I know we're just talking about the women's, but the thing I like about both is they had these built-in storylines to go along with the spot. So, you know, Carrie looked. I thought Carrie looked really good, but it kind of felt like she went. She went to Japan. She came back, and now she's. Uh, even the more established kind of kind of badass. Oh, she, I agree. And, and she looked at the part too. Yes. Then you had EO doing EO's crazy stuff. I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, Bailey, I thought, you know, like they said, she's the MVP of the match. Bailey's just, right now, she's just the unsung hero of, of a lot of things. A hundred percent. But you got to pay attention to the shit she's doing like on Twitter or I'm sorry, X or whatever and Instagram. Mm -hmm. If you noticed right before on Survivor Series night, it was going all around that she had posted a picture like long game or something like that. And it was a picture of the four horse women. Yeah, Sasha I, Banks included. Yeah, and it, I, I believe she did another one right before. I don't know if it was the same day or the day before. I can't remember. But it said always have a always have another plan. And it was a, it was just a picture of uh Mercedes or Sasha, whatever you want yeah. to call it. Um and I think that would be that you know that's kind of another built-in storyline because you had the Becky and Charlotte are now friends yep. again, and, and then they gave the hug, and that you know it was yeah. the big pop. I liked that because again, I'm not a big Charlotte Flair fan. I think they handed her way too many titles, way too fast. She has at, she has at least five, I'll say five to six of her fifteen runs or fourteen runs or whatever she's got are less than thirty days. They're, you know, less than two weeks. They're garbage transfer championships. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't want Becky to lose it, but we'll let Charlotte beat Becky so that somebody, that Bianca can beat Charlotte. You know, like, right. we don't want Bianca to beat Becky. Well, you want to get her to, you want to get her that 16, 16. Exactly. Title like her dad or more. And it's, you know, and a lot of them are, are also, I mean, I like that Becky had the NXT title. Yeah, just because she actually did something with it, she showcased a lot of NXT uh, women who really weren't getting a proper showcase. You know, they were on the show, but they weren't getting the proper, yeah, um, you know, um, time that they needed to showcase what they could do. And she put a lot of you know a lot of women over before dropping it to uh, uh Ly was it Lyra, Lyra, yeah, Lyra, Lyra, yeah, uh, yeah, Lyra. So, um, no, I get just, it. Just, just to get them all the titles, but you know, again, as far as the match went, I thought that I agree. I agree with Dean. You know, it, it started off a little slow, but I think that's just war games do. I mean, you know, you got well, they up, definitely uh, yeah build up to three or four people in the ring, and then you know, it's, it's just a two on one match for the first at least like ten weak, minutes. We saw like weak spots in the beginning, just like. It looked like they didn't know what to do to kill time until the action picked up. I don't know. It was just weird. No, I get it. I'm the same way. I felt it. I love Shotzi. Um, um, I, I was going to ask you great. about that, Dean, because <laughs> she did okay. Like, she was the most out of place, in my opinion, and the only reason she was there because they shaved her head. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, she didn't do bad. She did a great job after she got misted, in my opinion. After she got misted, she was a different or different wrestler. But before that, she kind of just flopped around. Um, when when I can't remember who folded her, but somebody folded her in between the fucking cage and the ropes, oh, and was she, it was crazy. I was like, oh god. Um, was it, it Bailey got folded like that too? Yeah. Was it the Was it the women's match? I don't remember who it was, but someone. It was like they just got like. Someone power bombed them into the kitchen. They just like got cheese grated all the yeah, way down. Yeah, all the way down. Yeah, that was the women's match for sure. <laughs> I don't remember who that was, but I remember I was going, "Oh God!" I think Shotzi. it was Shotzi. <laughs> oh my yeah. God! It might have been. I th you know, I thought Shotzi did good. I mean, yeah, no, she, she did good. And but and um, Michael Cole said it afterwards, and it was kind of took the words right out of my mouth as he was like, "She solidified." Or maybe it was Triple H afterwards in the presser, 
And he said she solidified herself is up there. And I agree with that. After she got missed it, she came back and she was like, ah, like crazy with it. And I like that. But I just, I don't know. I'm not really digging her hair with the little spikies. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's weird. Little, that's I'm weird. <laughs> I'm, I'm, cool, I'm cool with the reason she did it. Yeah. Yeah, it, absolutely. Yeah. 100% yeah. for a sister. That's a, I just fully support that. It's just. I'm just like I said. I'm just so used. I to got the used to hair. the green hair and the long in this, yeah. and then she comes out, and it just it looks weird to me. Not in a bad way, just weird. That used um, to. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'll get used to it because it definitely fits her punk rock motif, though. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it doesn't work against her. She has that gimmick of the, you know, the. I missed the tank last night. I wanted her to bring out the tank, but they destroyed <laughs> the tank a while ago. You know. Love the tanks. <laughs> um. Let's move on. We had Dragon Lee. I, I know this wasn't the next match, but I want to talk about this match because this match was good. Dragon Lee versus Santos Escobar, buddy. Do you think the right person won this match? That's what I want to know. For storyline purposes, yes. But I still think Dragon Lee won from this. He got over. He got some more spotlight. Well, it was his first like, PLE, very first PLE with WWE. Yeah. So, I mean, he put on, like, Dragon Lee's really good, but, like, I don't know. I feel like with a star like Dragon Lee, especially because you're trying to build that Lucha fan base back, right? You got it, it's hard to have him win or to have him lose that first match, in my opinion. But they, they just, they've got the storyline going on with Rey Mysterio, him leaving the LWO. Oh, I know. That's because Santos Escobar said, I'm not the next Rey Mysterio. I'm the first Santos Escobar. Yeah. Which and is a killer fucking line. So I just, I heard rumblings that um, he might be joining with Angel Garcia and uh, the other dude. What are they calling themselves now? I forgot. Umberto Carrillo? Yeah, yeah, thank yeah you, Umberto. Thank you, Jeremy. I can't remember their the, the tag team name. I was going to yeah, say, yeah, yeah, they got a tag team name. I can't remember it off the top of my head. But, yeah, no, I thought this match was phenomenal. Great spots. Um, definitely, like I said, Dean said, for storyline purposes, it was it worked out. It, you, it's going to – go ahead. Oh, you, for storyline, Escobar had to win. The only, My only critique of the match is I think they – I personally think they should have gotten another five or ten minutes. Yeah, I think that yeah. when you're trying to really show off that lucha libre, and even though everyone's seen it, you want you want it to makes show it, it off. exciting. Exactly. Yeah, they had that spot where he was trying to rip off the mask. I was like, mm -hmm. I love that Escobar. shit. Yeah, yeah, I love that shit because it's especially when you know. And I know it's if you're listening to our show, it's probably you're not. This isn't your likely scenario, but you've been in this scenario before. When you're watching wrestling with friends and they don't really know what's going on, they just know wrestling. But then when he tries to rip that, and you can be like, "Oh, do you know why he's ripping that mask off? Do you know why that's so important?" And it like some people don't. Some people just think they right. just wear masks. You know, like that they don't know that that's an important thing. It's you know almost biblical to them to have right. that mask on. So I don't know. It was cool. I like. I love mask rip spots. I think they're great because then you, it. You don't know how real they are, so you don't know if this dude's like really yeah, like trying to fight to get his mask, keep his mask on. And then, like as a kid, I remember the first time I saw Rey Mysterio's face. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember when they unmasked Rey Mysterio in WCW. Man, I I loved it. I thought maskless Mysterio and the filthy animals was the was the best. with the little with the little the blonde hair. Oh yeah. my god! Don't you remember he, when he had the horns on his? He had the head. Yeah, yeah, he had the stocking cap with the horns on it. Yep. I thought that was it. Was it was? I don't even know how to explain it. You know what it was? It's like an '80s horror film. It's so <laughs> bad that it's good. Yep, that like, you can't I turn did. away. Exactly. That's a, way, that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> oh man, bring back the filthy animals. Conan, right, Conan, please. Conan and everybody. I was looking. I was looking at WWE titles real quick. This is a little bit off topic because they had a sale last night, and I was looking I, at all the title belts. I was and they, too. the old WCW title belt, not the big gold. Do you remember when they rebranded Dean and they came with like the creepy logo that had like the points on the end and shit? Yeah. That WCW heavyweight title belt, that's just like a big circle. It looks like the Winged Eagle style, like just circle with side plates. It was only like 200 bucks. It's a pretty belt. Like, <laughs> but like, you can make it and nobody even be like, what the hell belt is that? Like, it makes no sense. Um, they have a purple WWE 
heavyweight championship belt that I need. So I'm going to be purchasing that as soon as possible, probably next year. That'll be my next purchase. Um, Let's move on and talk about Gunther defending the championship against probably the only man that I would want to wait to beat him against it because the Miz. Um, and I actually thought that he had a shot because of the whole nine time thing. Yeah. I thought he was going to get it because they're trying to get Chris Jericho's name out of that book. Um, so I thought they were like, I was like, oh shit, maybe they'll let Miz take this from Gunther because that'll tie him with Chris Jericho. And then you can say most title runs ever, the Miz and Chris Jericho. It'll happen. I don't know, man. The Miz, I, I think Triple H said it best. Like again, in the, in the presser, he was like, the Miz is whatever we need him to do. He's very company affiliated guy. And He's why not reward him with two short title reigns just to give him that? See, I don't know. Who does he? I don't want him to just like, just like a I don't want a meaningless, I hate meaningless title runs. Like, don't give him that title run, you know, for (coughs) two weeks just so he could beat the lose it and then win it back again and then lose it, you know, two more weeks later to somebody else just so he can have the record. Like, that's eh. I'd rather him win it one more time have a nice six to eight month run, lose it at WrestleMania. And then the Miz walk away in the sunset because I, he fucking deserves it. Right. I will, I will agree with everything triple H said about the Miz. He's always been a company man. And he, he put that like, um, even the Miz, when the Miz said to Gunther, it's probably the one thing he's never lied about. He made that title prestigious, dude. You wanted to fight for the inner IC title when the Miz was doing that run. That was <coughs> so Gunther. Chef's kiss. And so but Gun- yeah, Gunther is and I don't know who the fuck's gonna beat Gunther. Like Well, this is one of those once I heard Joey was coming on, I was excited. This is one of the things I wanted to hear his thoughts on was this match. So Joey, what were your thoughts on the Miz and Gunther match? The Miz to me is he's such an enigma because he can just in the like like that just you know, as the blink of an eye, go from being your more your one of your most hated guys to a baby face. And he's been able to do that for a while. And then you know, going back to what you know Mike said with, you know, like what Triple H said in the um in the press conference, you know, he can be whatever you need him to be. Well, in the last how you however many months, he's really evolved in the ring too. He's, he's taking more risks than he's ever has in his career, you know, and who knows why that is, but it's extremely entertaining in, for in-ring and on, you know, and storytelling purposes as well. Um, Gunther, I mean, he, you know, he was in the Indies for a long time, you know, he was oh, yeah. big. Wal- Walter. Yeah, Walter. <clears throat> but he, you know, he was great there. He comes to WWE. Oh, well, he was. He, I believe he was in. He was in uh, WWE UK, uh, NXT UK. NXT. He was NXT UK was champion, champion for yeah. three hundred some days. Right. Then you know. Then he loses all this weight, and he looks. He looks outstanding, but he still maintains. And he still walks around like this big monster presence. Yeah, yeah he lost like a hundred pounds. Deadly. Yeah, but when you get it, these long title reigns. Don't come. They haven't been around in a long time. You know, you have Roman Reigns at what a thousand or four almost fourteen hundred days. Something I, I don't remember. So, some crazy number of days. Acknowledge yeah, the years. chief. <laughs> and then you, now you have Gunther at over five hundred. You know, with the IC title, I think that they don't come around very often. You want to protect that because that brings that prestige to that title. You know, just like you know, fighting the Miz, that was prestigious for for Gunther to do because the Miz was the the you know like the I, I don't know if I call the caretaker of that kind of that lineage for this this era, the past fifteen right. years or so. You know, that's been the Miz has tried to raise that title up to you know where it was when Mister Perfect held it, and you know, back you know going you going back into like the mid early and mid nineties. I uh, see so yeah, honky tonk man. Yeah, I mean, you know, and that's, you know, people forget the IC title. That was a stepping stone. You know, Stone Cold held it, The Rock held it, and you know, Triple H, and that was a stepping stone to get to that heavyweight title picture. Yep. 
and now they're able to kind of use that as it's its own you know it's it's not a secondary prize it is a, a oh, primary yeah. prize 100 percent and being able to do that with someone like Gunther, who is so good in the ring, and he's becoming more and more comfortable on the mic, too. Yeah, he's improved tremendously on the mic. I'll give you that. Yeah, because when he first came out, he could barely speak English, though. He like he could barely speak English. His, his English was real choppy, and he had to have those other guys, um, I don't know, Ludwig Kaiser and the other guy, like, talk for him, basically. Or he would say one or two words. But, yeah, no, I agree with everything Joey said. He came out, he dropped 100 pounds, at least. He used used to look like a big chubby guy, and then now he just looks like a big guy. Like he's he done nothing but you. he's done nothing but win. Yeah, and his bear paws, like you can literally see them on people's chest when he's done chopping them. It, they're just ugh. I wouldn't want to take a chop by Gunther. No, I mean, but I, I think Miz gained a lot from this match too, as far as like a respect standpoint, and probably. Opened a lot of eyes to a lot of people that have been down him for a while. So I think he had a lot to gain from this too, even though he took the L, but he showed up. Yeah, and I you know, I'm not gonna call it a five star match, but I could tell you I was hundred percent entertained by it. I thought, you know, both both guys did phenomenal in the match for what they needed to do. You know, Miz looked strong, Gunther looked strong, and they protected the prestige of that title, which is, you know, and now, I agree. And like, like Mike said, you know, like now who's next, who's going to be the next guy, you know, and that's, that's what we're, when you can build that a title like that and you're like, okay, well, who's now who's next? They're doing it right. Yeah. Because we're, we're invested. We want to know who's the next guy who's going to challenge. And that's, that's really awesome. I mean, I can honestly say since triple H and well, since the merger, and TKO has basically said they've done everything except specifically say Vince McMahon is no longer in fucking charge. <laughs> WWE's been phenomenal. NXT's even been pretty fucking serviceable. Like, yeah. he, Triple H, he comes out with his glasses on and his old man reading notes. And it's crazy to me because, <laughs> once again, that's the game. Like, that's... <laughs> The 14 time world heavyweight champion. Like, Just, but now he's Triple H the businessman and he's introduced as Paul Levesque, not Triple H anymore. Like, he's a legit businessman. This isn't a work. And I, we've all said this for years because he was a part of such one of the greatest, arguably the greatest era of wrestling history ever. He knows how to do it, he knows what we like. And Obviously, as as wrestling as a promoter, I hate to say it. Of course, you want to cater to the children and cater to this. But guess what? That kid ain't got no damn job. All right, I'm buying <laughs> tickets. So you, ultimately, you want me to to be interested in the product so that I can get my child interested in the product, and then you have a little bit of both worlds. But ultimately, you have to keep me interested without having. Um, and then I made this a big point during the um, women's match last night when I was watching it. I was like, it used to be they we cared so much about women's and it was bra and panties matches. Um, Jello wrestling in a pool or whatever they were doing over there. Evening gown. <laughs> the, not discounting some of the women wrestlers, Lita, Sh Sable, stuff like that. But they were more for their looks. These women these days can wrestle. Sure, they're gorgeous. <laughs> But they can go like oh, they yeah. can wrestle, <clears throat> and it's just it's it's a great to be able to see Triple H putting everything together that he knows we want to see to try to bring up the um you know viewership I guess SmackDown crushed AEW in the ratings this week or viewership like two hundred and twelve million on SmackDown and AEW had like five hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, the one thing I kind of want to piggyback real quick is. Triple H knows he still needs the he needs the younger audience because those are going to be the that's the next generation. What he's doing so well is he's somehow being able to introduce a little bit of that attitude era into the PG era. That's really what I, everybody wants is damn near the same thing. It's just tweaked a little bit too curved yep. at the time. Yep. Yeah. I don't and need I, I don't need all the ripping clothes off. I don't need none of that stuff. But I, you give me some bullcrap like where our truth will cuss somebody out without cussing them out. 
You know what I'm saying? Or make them look stupid. It's it's gold. I will I will say this, uh, and I, I'm sure I'm gonna. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this. I am a fan of professional wrestling. I am also a fan of sports entertainment. I like the storylines. I like the wrestling. The wrestling tell a lot of times the wrestling match itself tells the story. Yeah. But 13 year old me would be remiss if that if you know Stacy Keebler and Tori Wilson didn't have a brawn panties match. I might not be as big of a fan as I am now. That no, I agree <laughs> with you. That's fine. I'm not discounting the fact, and I'm not saying I'm not saying that I do they not own. Um, Sable. I'm not saying that I don't own. <laughs> I don't own um, Hugh Hefner once owned magazines with those ladies in them because that's what they did. I get it. I was a horny 14 year old boy once too. (laughs) I mean, but sorry. (laughs) Also, also seeing those women like Lita who would do the kind of sexy stuff where she'd have the thongs coming up over her hips and stuff like that. But then she's still coming up, throwing up moonsaults and stuff like that. There was great ladies at the times, but those ladies that you just spoke of in my Deborah, opinion, De- Deborah, not Deborah. a wrestler, bro, not a no, wrestler. But she you, was I mean, there for her breasts only. I know. <laughs> look at, but look at Trish. Trish came in and she was not a wrestler, and then she yeah. goes, you know, she, old, she evolves into this. Same with China. China came in. She wasn't a wrestler. They found her not in a yet. gym, yeah. and she ended up because you know I mean. So they, put her in the Hall of Fame, bro. Oh, please, yeah, they, they have to. I love China. Yeah. But you could say that all the time now, and I won't even – I mean, I guess not all the time, but there are some people even now that are like that, that aren't wrestlers. And I was going to ask you about this because he didn't have a match, and we have you on – how do you feel about our new United States champion? Uh, Logan Paul. So – oh, God. So I – I you know, I don't know these people – personally obviously you know a couple of wrestlers i know but um i don't know logan paul i think in the ring i he's spectacular you you can't take anything away from the guy he can do he could do it all and i did like how i did listen to a clip where he was on his show and everyone was praising him about you know catching ray mysterio you know ray almost broke his neck and he goes as much as i like getting all the praise I was too far back. That was, was on like, me. He said he fucked up too. Yeah. And I respect the hell out of that. Exactly. Yeah. And so when you <laughs> look at him as as a as an athlete, as a as a as a performer in the ring, I don't know what this guy can't do. He's strong, he can fly, and he, and on top of that, he's safe. You know, right. he proved that he's safe to work with too. No, so I he agree. Could, he can do everything. My problem is you're taking a title out of out you're taking the t- a title that can propel someone like an LA Knight, who I still think you know that is what he yeah. should have went after. He should have went after they should have put the US title on him, and you're taking it away. So now you're missing a stepping stone for someone who is a full timer and you know. Logan Paul just... has said that he's going to be a full timer. He has officially retired from boxing. He has said that he wants to be a WWE superstar. It's kind of like The Miz. Like it's, you know what I'm saying? Like The Miz was a real world fucking celebrity, bro. And that's what he did on the real world was run around and tell these people in this house that he was going to be on the WWE one day. He and look like, at him. He was like 21 years old when he did that. He's in he's been in WWE for 20 years. Oh yeah, I can't. I don't know if Logan Paul's going to be in WWE for twenty years. No, but I'd like to see the I'd like to see the title back in WWE sooner rather than later. I just and hope if it's not, he's gonna he'll he won't do like a Brock Lesnar because there's no reason to do like a Brock Lesnar type of thing with the United States yeah. title, bro. Exactly. Like, so, like like Joey was saying, I can go to elevate somebody else. Yeah. All, All right. right, let's get into it. The meat and potatoes of the weekend, boys. Men's War Games match. So, I was, I think I was the most excited that they used, I don't know, I I hate to say two of the biggest superstars because obviously it was full of superstars, but like for Finn Balor and Seth Rollins to start the match, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Same with the women though, too. Becky and it was Becky and somebody else, or who? Um, Bailey, Becky, and Bailey. Bailey. Be- yeah, Becky and Bailey, like the two big names went in there. It wasn't you know EO and, but like so, for Seth and that Seth and Finn to start the match, I loved it. I thought it was great. 
Yeah, it was good. Again, slow start to the to the match, obviously, because we have to get everybody to come in. Um, JD McDonough took a couple solid shots. Like I'm talking good cells. Like it was a great sell. Like he got hit in the head. I mean, there's no doubt in that, but like the kendo sticks, he took some good cells. So I don't really like him. I've never really liked Finn Balor 2.0. He took a good sell later in that night too. Oh, my. oh, that was that was the best, the sell. best one <laughs> I've ever seen, dude. He committed. Oh he my committed. god. Are you saying that's better than Evan Bourne? Yeah. Because they threw him off, it was beautiful. And the way J.D. McDonough committed, I mean, it's here. you don't have he, to say it like that. He got When he got RKO'd later on in the night by Randy, dude, he committed. If you go back and watch it, when they threw him, his arms went out and, mm-hmm. like, he floated for a minute, and then he put him down by his side, and he took it. He gave 100% faith for Randy to catch him, and it was gorgeous. Bro bro, really tried to fly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> super bad. Arms out, like, just <laughs> – like straight it was good it was good um i I, go ahead my i love that match because there are so there were so many stories like you said you had seth and 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 finn starting it out that's a story um broken shoulder universal championship right you have priest and seth you know priest is uh senior money in the bank that's right i thought he was gonna cash in last night too you had you had uh, Drew and you had Jay, and you know Drew obviously being the reason that, that uh, you, you, <laughs> you had you had, I mean the you know the second biggest return of the night, and I hate saying that, but Randy, I I hate that too because I look I, as much as I love the look we're as much as I love the best in the world showing back up in WWE after a ten year fucking hiatus, it tw- it totally dwarfed Randy's fucking return. Made and it Randy, look like it wasn't nothing. Randy is a monster. He's he's <laughs> that. I, he, I thought that was a second. Life, it looks like. He is built like a brick fucking shit house, dude. Oh my god. I, know, I was like, holy shit, Randy. What the f- <laughs> double, double fusion back surgery. Like, what the hell, double man? Fusion. Double fusion with a lot of steroids. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> still. Up. Killed it. Um, Who took the first RKO? JD. Dom, dir- dirty Dom. No, Dom. Yeah, you're right. Dom, dirty yeah, Dom. Dom. So How about too. Michael Cole? How about Michael Cole with the shade last night too? Like this is the longest Dominic Mysterio's ever spent behind bars. <laughs> <laughs> but I also, I also like you had the Randy and Jay that the, that storyline was built yeah. in. I love yeah. that he came into that and he like, he went down and then slithered back to the left and was up and mm-hmm. down. I was like, Oh, Oh, it was good. There, there was, was a couple of times during the match last night where I like felt like I was like you said, 14, 15 years old again. And I was like, Oh, 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 what? oh. like Jay, Jay saving him with the super kick dude. I was like, yeah. yes. Great with a beautiful super kick, by you the know, way. He, 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 he leaned into that one. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I will say, uh, I think the women match actually had better spots overall. There was just, there was a lot going on in the women's match, but I yeah. thought that overall they had better spots. But I will say, the, I think they, I'm sorry, I should say better. They had more spots. But, the RKO to JD off the top of the cage, that was amazing. Yeah, that was that was the, that was clutch. What, what would you call it? Uh, the the five man uh, DDT off the second rope. That oh was, yeah, the where the the in sync hangman where they all yep. did it. That was cool. That was and, cool. And, and Michael Cole going vintage Randy Orton went all five. Well, uh, Corey did, Graves, was, Corey Graves was like vintage. That's a museum. <laughs> 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 I just thought, yeah, and then, you know, I'm curious where Judgment Day, I want to see where that's going to go from here. I I'm agree. curious what all these new, and this is just the time, you know, I think, and I think Cody said it, there's a lot of baby faces. There's a lot of, you know, there's, there's a lot of people you want to see what's going to happen with and who knows who's going to be the hottest come, you know, Royal Rumble, Elimination Royal Chamber, Rumble. WrestleMania. Well, let's go ahead and talk about it. We got a couple minutes left. The best in the world returns to WWE Survivor Series in Chicago and has already said he will be on Raw Monday night in Nashville. Yeah. Okay. So, 
as a fan, fucking excited. I love CM Punk. I mean, look at my name right there. Did you, what, did you mark <laughs> You mark out what happened. You goddamn right I did. Jumped up off the, like, jumping around the house. I want, yeah. I want to give props to the WWE production crew for putting up the false copyright and false, like, all that information. The, mm -hmm. They're going to go off the air. The false copyright finish has been around for ages since the Attitude Era, and Triple H used it on us last night. And because nobody has seen it in 10 years, it fucking worked. And it was great. They panned out. They were just the whole thing, and there's like copyright in the end. Here you go. Have a great night, folks. Michael Cole with Corey Graves. See you later, motherfuckers. No, 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 no. What? <laughs> the whole crowd went ape shit. Loudest pop I guarantee WWE's had in ten years. It, it, it's it's got to be up there. I my, my, they said my, his shit had twenty six million views in three hours. Oh. I mean, I, and I I may have been like four at least four hundred of them. I I kept watching it over and over again. Yeah. Because, I mean, my I woke my wife up. She told me to. She said, "Shut the shut the hell up," and rolled over, and went back to sleep. But yeah. I I lost I lost my mind because I don't know what's going to happen with CM Punk. I think he's I think this is a better situation for him. I thought he looked fantastic. He looked rested. He didn't look tired. He looked like he was happy. Like he was pounding the ground. And he's like, I can't believe I'm home. I can't. Yeah, that's where it felt I like. I agree with that. And, but, and then it sucks because people have already, you know, went back to his AEW shit and clipped the shit where he was like, how oh, am I going to get better in a toxic place? It made me sick and this and that. And I understand. But other the people that are going to that need to understand that it's not the same place anymore. Right. Like Vince made him sick. Triple eight. Um, and somebody shared it today. Somebody shared it. And I want to talk about it real quick. And because we're gonna have to jump into our we're gonna jump into a break. Um, somebody shared the picture of Vince and Eric Bischoff shaking hands, and they were like, Triple H and CM Punk taking that picture together was the equivalent of that for today's age. Like, because <laughs> he's Triple H is trying to re re rebuild this friendship or rebuild this relationship that Ultimately, I think Vince McMahon effed up. Yeah. So. yeah I, I can agree with uh, Mr. McMahon effing it up, but I think I look at that picture of those two pointing at each other, and I, I, I think it means more than that Vince and Bischoff picture. Because for yeah. Vince, that was pure business, and I think it was a little bit for Triple H, but I think it was I think I think it's a whole lot more too. Yeah. It's uh no no bridge is ever fully burned. And the caption, cold day in hell. Let me mention that. I forgot. I mean, it, it doesn't really hurt my feelings that I forgot it because it wasn't that memorable of a match. Normally, it's what, w you know, we used to call them pee breaks. The women's championship match, um, Rhea Ripley versus Zoe Stark. I, it was terrible. It, 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 this match was probably one of the worst matches I've seen from Rhea Ripley in a long time, if we're being 100% honest. It wasn't that good of a match, in my opinion. Shh. I just, I don't, go ahead. Go ahead. I didn't think she was that bad. Uh, the match. Was I didn't blank. say she was that bad. I just wasn't that good. She. I don't know. The match was bland. I'll give you that. Um, love Zoe Sky. I'm Stark. Yeah, Zoe <laughs> Sky wrestles at Neo Pro, buddy. I don't know. If you think about it, they're very similar with style. Wrestlers. We love her too, though. So. Yeah. Um. I don't know. Yeah, it, it wasn't. It didn't get me going. It, but it, exactly. It, it was probably it go ahead and say it. It was probably the worst match of the night. It was. What what was it? It, it has nothing to do with who was in it. It was just the worst match of the night. It was that match? Um Zoe Stark looked pretty solid, not like spectacular. Rhea Ripley, in my opinion, looked okay. Um, I was not digging her outfit or her hair. Like the of the Sean kind of style. I yeah. I don't know. She looked like um, Edward Scissorhands gave her a haircut before the show. Don't hate her, mommy. We talked about Shotzi's hair earlier, and for me, Rhea Ripley trying to do the Dom with who's trying. It's like Rhea Ripley trying to do the Dom hair, but she took off of Eddie Guerrero's hair. Bro, so it's just like this. I don't know. Oh, he's cutting out again. Yeah, you're cutting out, bud. It just kind of started tailing down. Yeah. There, is that better? Yep. There we go. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with this. I, I need to get I need to get my uh my microphone back, but um 
She, yeah, I just she just has this weird hair right now. You know, maybe she'll grow it out again, or she'll cut it short, pick, pick something. But outside of that, I I think that I thought Zoe looked good. I don't think Rhea has the Rhea almost didn't to me didn't look like she knew what to do with a lot of Zoe's offense. So it just looked like Zoe was doing this crazy stuff, and Rhea didn't quite know how to come back from it or how how long to sell it because she also needs to be di- she needs to be dominant dominant yeah you, you know it was she works well with you know Charlotte and Bianca and you with Oscar but Zoe is a different type of animal because Zoe can she's powerful but she could do all the crazy you know she's she's kind of like a I don't want to say a Bianca a Bianca light because that's not doing right by Zoe, but she's she's very similar to Bianca in the fact that she's strong, but she's also extremely agile. and can do all the flips and crazy stuff too. So I don't know. I don't. I don't fault Zoe. I don't know if I really fault Rhea. I just think that they both kind of looked uncomfortable at times, and the match was what it was. No, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. It wasn't. It wasn't anything perfect. It wasn't. Whatever. She won a battle. Night. She won a battle royal to be there. It, you know, whatever. I'm okay with it. I definitely want to see more of Zoe Stark. I've seen it. She's it's pretty solid, in my opinion, from what I you know. So what I've seen overall of her work. So I'm not mad at it. She put on a good showing against Mommy, but in my opinion, worst match of the night. So let's go back to Survivor Series War Games. At the end, obviously, we said it already, the best in the world came out to a raucous ovation in Chicago. Reports are as soon as he came out, Drew left, got out of the ring and walked away, slammed his locker in the back, and was very visibly upset. We don't know about what. Didn't say. Um, also, I'm sure you've seen the, the X's or tweets or whatever we're calling them of Seth Rollins reading the riot act, basically, to CM Punk down the way, flipping him off. Fuck you. Fuck you. F you, you know, F this effing guy, all this. OK. It's well known, well known that Phil and Seth have heat. I've seen a clip where he was looking at Michael Cole. And he leaned over and he says, I'm going to go back there and knock him the fuck out. Yeah. It's well known that Seth Rollins and CM Punk have legitimate heat. Like, they legitimately do not like each other. And if the way it was presented, like Triple H said, that nobody knew he was coming besides a couple people, is this, how do we, what's going on here? Do we get Seth Rollins versus CM Punk? Like, is this... There was I heard reports that they pulled the entrance aside right before the match started and let them know. It's like when the entrance came out, it was like so fresh to them, but I don't know how true that is. Yeah. That's that's what I heard too. I heard that everybody knew they knew right before going out that CM Punk would be out at the end. Um, I also there's a video Drew leaves before CM Punk even comes out. Oh, so okay. I don't, and he's he's like holding his head like this, and he's he's kind of jogging back before CM Punk even comes out. So I don't think that was a CM Punk thing. I think that was something else, maybe potentially. Um, okay. And I honestly, there's also a video from not that long ago where you know Punk, or I'm sorry, not Punk. Um. Seth even Seth credits CM Punk for helping him a lot in the beginning, and says, "But you he know, also if, calls him a cancer to the locker room." Right, but how much stuff? How many times has has Seth gone on record of saying something, and then someone comes back, and they end up having, you know, he said a bunch of stuff about Cody too, and Cody comes oh. back, and they put on three phenomenal matches, and they're in war games together. And no, you know, I agree. I agree. So I'm not. I, I think Seth is smart enough that he knew this was something that would go viral and this literally sets up whether you want to be Ma- a Royal Rumble or Mania this sets up that clash of Seth is I mean look at he always he always did the back and forth with Will Ospreay yeah so if that if that you know if, what if Ospreay signed with WWE 
then you already have that built-in storyline. So whether this is true heat or whether it's a work, I don't know. I know a lot of those sheets have been, you know, their sheets are they're saying that they knew and it, that it is a work. Um, but I, I mean, obviously, I think that there is. Some, I mean, I think there obviously is animosity between the two of them, um, at least from Seth's side. I don't know if Punk cares that much. I don't think um, he does really. If we're being honest, no. I don't think he's he's past it. Like I hate to say it, but he's got the, he's the I'm the best in the world. Like clearly and. I, I hate just keep referencing Triple H, but he's so right. Whether you love CM Punk or you hate CM Punk, you're going to pay attention to what the headline says about him. Yeah. It, it, you know, you're going to tune in whether you love him or hate him. I guarantee you all these people that are talking shit, saying that it was horrible for him to come back to WWE, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're going to be watching tomorrow night to see what he does. Yeah. I mean, it's, I don't know. So, I mean, again, I'm excited for CM Punk to be back. I, um, our, you know, Pauly, you remember Pauly, Pauly says Mm -hmm. that the only reason for CM Punk to be back is to take the title off of Roman Reigns. See, I think he, I think it would be better for Punk to take the title off of Seth. I agree. Who is going to – because I think Seth can go – because just like we talked about earlier, like Miz, Seth can switch to bad guy very quickly. He's good and, at it. Exactly. And then I think – he's good at being annoying. Yeah. Even when – even now he's a, he's a bit – he's a face. He's still – you know, if you took away the chant, he's, he's still annoying. Yeah. Great – I mean, phenomenal in the ring, but, you know, a lot of stuff he does is – I love Seth. Yeah, me too. Seth's probably my – Seth's been I, my favorite WWE wrestler for a long time. I like I, I like Seth too as a as a wrestler, but God, I, I oh my God! But like when he did like the like with the, the cackle laugh when he was with Triple H and oh my God, like that was so annoying. You, like you wanted, but he's good at that. He's good. You just at wanted making, to punch him in the face. But that's what good performers do. They can make you love them or hate them in you know with the, in the, in the you know just flipping the switch. Um, oh yeah, but I, 100%. I think Seth could easily go. To go uh to get heat and then punk takes a title off of that you know mania or you know what it may be that's my opinion i still personally think that cody needs to be the one to take the title off of roman just Unless, to complete the story if I they think, did that right and they built that story up for wrestlemania it could be like their closest thing to ever being rock austin yeah that would yeah. Just, no i agree I, the the only the only way that I don't see Cody taking it off him at Mania is either if they a dis, Rock decides to do Rock versus Reigns or b they wanna they want Reigns to, to continue the uh, the reign to surpass Hogan yeah and then and then they take it off him at uh, SummerSlam but at that point I think you're just missing a massive opportunity to do it at Mania. No, I agree. I, they can't. It's got to happen at Mania. He's got to lose it at Mania. It's the biggest show of them all. It doesn't make sense for him to lose it anywhere else, in my opinion. But I, th- I, I think that I think that Punk, uh, Punk, Seth is just. I mean, that's that should be like main event night one or oh. night two, and that would I think that those two could bring the house down. Oh, I agree, hundred ten percent. All right, so Joey, what would you rate? Go ahead. I was going to say, here at the pile driver, we give ratings one out of five pile drivers. What are you giving SummerSlam 2020? I'm sorry, Survivor Series 2023. One out of five. How many pile drivers? How many many pile drivers? (laughs) One one, 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 or up to five pile drivers. That's right. I'm going to give a solid four pile drivers. That's what I think. Very, very good. Uh, the, The Rhea. If, if Rhea Zoe was a real was a good match, might even go up to four and a half. But I'm gonna stick stay with my stick with my guns and say four. That's where I'm at too. Four, four pounds. That's about what I said last night. Um, and then um, CM Punk showed up. So four point five for me. It's the best in the world. I, I can't. I got nothing else to say. He's great. He's you know. Yeah. Again, I'm always gonna be a fan. I do. I do have to. Uh, no. 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 Uh oh! My Uh-oh. oldest right here. 
she she really she wanted to stay up and watch. <laughs> she uh she she wanted to stay up because uh, she loves Bianca Belair and okay uh, and you want to stay up and say hi? You can stay up and say hi. Okay. Uh, hey. You can talk. They can hear you right yeah, now. Yeah, I can hear you. You're a big Bianca Belair fan. <laughs> All right. So yeah, the uh, the office is under construction, so I'm sitting in her room. That's why you, you know you got uh, oh, gotcha. I got my posters and stuff. Around. Hey, that's all right. That's all right. Those are cool posters back there. But, Those are cool but, posters. But I got posters said, too. Yeah, we well, yeah we're well, a little bit different. Um, but like you said, and like we talked about, Triple H knows how to, you know, kids. My daughter's ten. She loves watching wrestling with me. You know, I mean, I'm, cool. I'm I'm 38, so there's this generational gap where these kids now are watching wrestling because it's cool again. And Triple H did that, and I love being able to share that with my daughter. And but now it's now you got a bonding moment. Exactly, yeah, exactly. 100%. And she became fan. She became a fan of like EO. She was asking me about you know who's who's Carrie and. That was, well, that was you'll awesome. have to you'll have to bring her out and meet us at a Neo Pro sometime, a Neo Pro show sometime, or you know, come out and get a catch a mega show sometime with us, man. We were you were supposed to bring me the last time, and uh... Sorry. that's you can, blame <laughs> Dean. you can blame Dean on that. I don't have your I don't have your contact info, but I got your email now. So here to go. Well, thank you, man, so much for taking time. I appreciate you joining us. Appreciate you talking some Survivor Series. Hey, thank you for having oh, me on. This was shout out what blast. you got going on. And where they can uh, find. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, all over the place, uh, writing sports uh, and politics for Lake County Sentinel. I'm with four other publishers. Uh, so, Joey's uh, busy on, out here in these streets. Follow, follow me on Twitter, uh, goodfellow underscore Joey, and uh, you'll see everything I'm doing. Go Browns, go, go all Cleveland sports, and uh. Can't wait to see that SummerSlam uh, Cleveland 2024 sign here soon. Oh, hey, you just wait on that, buddy. We got something in the works for that. Don't you fret. The Ooh. our 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 good friend, the Ohio Chief from Mega Championship Wrestling. <laughs> he's got some stuff he's working on. So if when if and when SummerSlam comes, IndyCon is going to be a big thing. Oh, yes. that's going to be that's going to be the best. We get a bunch of the independent local wrestling companies together, and they all throw a big show. Before SummerSlam, it's going to be phenomenal. So oh, can't wait. Stay on the Cannot lookout for wait. that, man. And like I said, I'll shoot you an email. We'll stay in contact, and we'll get you to come to the next show and yep. hang out with us. Okay, Miss you, brother. It. Love you guys. Miss you guys. Love you too, man. Love you too. We'll see you next time, everybody. Make sure you drink your water. Stay hydrated. I'm the best in the world. That's the big dog. <laughs>